What's up everybody, Alan Butler from Southeast Pennsylvania. Thanks for taking a look at my basement here. I uh, wanted to go over a couple things before we go check it out. I live in a small house, so I have a long wish list of things that I wanted in the basement and the wife got involved and she wants in the basement and I don't have a lot of space, so I had a lot of space challenges to deal with. So I wanna show you a couple things down there, some of the little tricks that I did to get around some space challenges that we have. The things I wanted, um, I wanted a movie theater. I always wanted a, a home theater and I love the idea of a 1940s style theater so that was wish number one wish number two we needed a place to have parties and uh, gatherings you can tell over here here's my dining room table it seats six people that's it this is the only space i have to entertain so when you have four families over you're squished in here like sardines and i do not like being squished like a sardine so i needed another space that we could entertain. So we love the idea of an Irish themed pub. Then the wife's demands. That posed challenges because we, again, we don't have a lot of space down there. So she's a licensed cosmetologist. So she wanted a place to do hair, nails, makeup, things like that. So she wanted a hair salon. And then the latest challenge is the work remotely challenge. I'm sure you're all experiencing it. She started off over there at the kitchen table for a year sitting there. And after about a year and a half, two years, we realized this is probably more of a permanent thing. So I needed a space for her to work from home, comfortable, private, quiet. Again, we have to cram all this stuff into a small space. So let's go down, let's take a look and uh, we'll go over some of the stuff. All right, here we are at the bottom of my steps. So this is challenge number one. It's a dark hallway up there. And how do you light this thing? make it unique, make it a talking point. And this is probably the one thing I get the most questions about is how I did these stairs. So I'm gonna go over this with you real quick. Um, these are just regular construction grade stairs. They were carpeted at one point. So I took the carpet off, sanded down the treads, pulled the staples, all that good stuff, stained them up, a dark colored wood to go with that Irish pub kind of feel the lights everybody wants to know about. So I'm gonna show you how I did these lights. So right here, there's a lens that you just kind of pop off, which I already had ready to go for you. Um, I get this anodized aluminum track here. You can get it off of Amazon. It's inexpensive, it comes with this lens. You put that right on top of the stair tread, you attach it to the stair riser. And this thing is about 3 eighths of an inch deep. So I got MDF, sheet good, uh, from the local home store, 3 8 sheet good. Um, I think I one sheet got me all these risers, maybe two sheets, I forget, inexpensive. Um, you rip it down to size here, you paint it out black, and you just attach it with some brad nails, and that flushes that out right there. That gives you a spot to run your, your LED tape light. So I just bought a roll of LED tape light, cut it in sections, you fasten it right to here, and then in this corner, it's hard to see, but there's a little hole in there that I drilled. It's about a 3 8 hole. And I took the wire of that light. I run it through the stair horse. Behind here is unfinished. I have that luxury. So all these wires, if you can imagine, are coming through the stair horse. Tied them all together back there, ran them to the switch. So when the light switch comes on at the top of the steps, these guys come on and it lights the stairs coming down. And it kind of gives it a floating stair look. Uh, which I thought was pretty cool. So that is how we do the stairs. Stop number two, here we are at the hair salon slash craft area slash desk area slash wife getaway. Uh, part of the compromise of being able to finish the basement, I had to make the wife happy, so I had to give her what she wanted, so this is it. So I just started off with a typical store-bought, storefront glass kind of look here, painted it black, found this sign on Amazon, I think. It went with her color scheme of red and black. 
So thought it was a pretty cool entrance way into her salon area. So when we come in here, small space, it's probably nine foot by 11 foot, somewhere in that area. Um, so it was how do you cram all that stuff into this small area? Um, it laid out pretty good. So I just did a lighted mirror for her here. This is where she obviously cuts all of her hair. Um, had this little nook here that I, that I put a just hair washing station in, ran PEX tubing back behind this wall where there is a discharge pump that runs to the sewer main, which is also behind that wall and water meter. So there's some challenges there that I can talk about in a minute. Um, so she has that. And then right over here behind us, we have just a simple craft station. It's just some, I think, leftover base cabinets from a project that I did. And I threw them together, a little space for a chair, some storage up here, throw some crown molding on it. And you got yourself a small craft area here. So that took care of the craft issue. And then here is the most recent challenge here is the work from home challenge. So if you can imagine this used to be a closet. So this used to be a wall with a door here, full height door. This wall went around and came over here. Behind that wall sits my water main, my water meter, the discharge pump for her sink. Uh, I have hose shutoffs going outside in here. I have uh, shutoffs for the bar sink in here. So there was a lot of challenges in this small space that I had to try to hide and still make it presentable. So what I did was cut this wall in half, remove the door, wrap the wall in some shiplap here, put a top on this to create this kind of, almost looks like a reception area for the salon. Um, and then back here, it's real simple. I threw a countertop in. Uh, I did some flooring that matches the bar out there just to tie them all together. Um, this sign is pretty cool. I just made this out of three quarter inch plywood. I just drew this design. It kind of has the scissors and her initials J and B and uh, painted it up with the red and black to match everything. Threw some LED tape lights in and it all ties to this switch that's back here. That uh, We have a dimmer switch that's back here, some USB switches and things so we can adjust when she's on Zoom calls and things like that. Um, like I said, I threw some access panels in here. I can't move the screen right now, but behind here is my water main. So this is just a standard uh, access panel on a magnet. I built some access panels down there, which hides my water meter, um, or not my water meter, my discharge pump and my water main sits down there. That kind of tucks back there. This is kind of cool. Um, behind here, I don't know if you can see it or not, there is the hot and cold shut off from my bar sink, which we'll see in a little bit. So it was a challenge of how do I hide that and still keep this look. All I did here was took the same piece of shiplap. I actually ripped it off here, ripped it off here, threw a couple hinges on it and cut it on the same profile as this sign and threw this kind of hidden handle on it. And now you have this access panel that hides these guys back here. Up here, standard store-bought access panel. My hose bib shut off up there, so. Uh, I threw that up there, nothing special. So that is pretty much the rundown of my wife's space. All right, here we go. We're out of the salon, kind of back down at the bottom of the steps. Found this cool little thing on Etsy, um, inexpensive, has my last name initial when we were married. So I thought it was a cool little thing uh, to come down to the bottom of the steps to. Uh, real quick, this brick, uh, this goes with the Irish pub theme. I really wanted brick down here. It kind of gives it a different feel than the rest of my house. So reached out to my boys over here at DNS Elite Construction in Douglasville. Uh, they gave me a hand with some of the masonry here that you see. Um, they helped me out with some electrical because I am not an electrician and I'm not going to pretend to be. They helped me out with some plumbing. Um, any of the woodwork that you see down here, I did myself. I, I have 15 years finished carpentry experience. So this is all stuff that I built. Um, nothing here is store bought other than the base cabinets over there, which we'll go through. But everything else I pretty much built from scratch. So, um, so anyway, this is the Irish themed bar, uh, Butler's Bar and Grill. We proudly serve whatever you brought. So if you come over, make sure you bring something and I will gladly serve it. Number one challenge down here is space. I don't have a lot of space. So 
I think I have 12 feet from that back wall where the TVs are up to the stairs. And I probably have about 18 foot in length here, give or take somewhere in that area. So it was, how do I fit as many people down here as possible? This is kind of what I came up with. And I got a six seat bar here. Uh, I used that angle, kind of went with my fish tank wall. Fish, my fish are real important. I thought it'd be cool to accent that wall with some brick and uh, the fish are real active. It gives you something to look at there. Yeah, I mean, all this is just wood paneling, sheet goods, one by, you know, sanded it up, stained it, um, found the color I like. Um, countertops are just oak one by, they're biscuit jointed together. Five coats of um, spar urethane. This is not epoxy because I didn't have the patience uh, for epoxy. So I just did five coats of spar urethane on here. So coming into here, this is where I have my space issue because I had to get, I had to be able to work back here and still have enough room for all this stuff. So what I did was instead of buying your typical base cabinets, I bought wall cabinets. They're only 12 inches deep compared to 24 inches deep. And all you do is do a false toe kick down here, which packs these things up and uh, makes it look like a base cabinet, but it's only 12 inches deep. So that's what this is. This is a line of base cabinets that I put together that allowed me to pack out this wall a little bit, which I could recess this 24 inch deep refrigerator into, because this is a standard depth refrigerator. So that was a challenge. I needed to have a fridge down here. How do I fit it in? So it is actually pushed back in the wall, probably eight inches or so. So um, that's how I got it through that challenge. Uh, again, a little brick accent back here, two TVs, usually sports, usually the Eagles, the Phillies, the Sixers, whatever, golf. So two TVs back here. Um, again, on this side is base cabinetry, same exact thing as the other side, packed up on toe kicks, just some joined oak over here, relatively inexpensive ice maker, got a little spot for it and a small bar sink right here so I can do some dishes, do some prep work, whatever. I did have a challenge in here. I wanna show you this little cool thing I came up with. Behind this, believe it or not, sits my electrical panel. This used to be a closet here, if you can picture that. So I didn't want the closet, obviously, because it's gonna ruin my bar. So how do I get by that challenge? So what I did was a false access panel behind here. So I'm gonna show you how that works but I gotta take off all this stuff first, so I'm gonna do that right now. All right, here we are. I've emptied all of the stuff off the shelves, which again is not the most convenient thing, but you gotta sacrifice somewhere to handle these challenges. So we're here, empty, empty shelves here. These shelves are different than the shelves on that side. These shelves are removable. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. If we come over here to these shelves, these shelves are not removable. These are fixed. So I have a, a cleat down here. They're secured down. These cannot move. They don't move. There's no need to move them. But over here, like I said, I have an electrical panel back here. So the challenge is how do you hide it? So real simple, removable shelves. So I just build these freestanding shelves here. Real simple, three quarter plywood, three quarter oak stained up. They are on these shelf clips. So now we have this. So what I did was I fixed this back cleat to the, the fixed part of this cabinet, which is right, if you look real careful, there's a seam that sits right along there. It kind of hides that seam. And then these two pieces are fixed to the actual access panel itself. Over here, we have shelf pins. These just remove, you pull them out. Now, it just as simple as I hold this handle, which was hidden behind the liquor, I hold right here, and this whole panel comes off. It's on magnets. So it kind of just slides out of here and drops down. And behind there, lo and behold, is everything you're not supposed to see hidden back there. So that's kind of how I handled uh, that little challenge. All right, coming out of my corner where I usually spend time, I'm gonna talk quick about these LEDs. Um, I wanted a front lit cabinet. Um, 
to kind of still keep that vintage look but still like these things and make it look cool. So I went back to Amazon and I got the angled uh, channel anodized aluminum. It screws on back here. Again, LED tape light comes up through this little hole here runs up behind here, runs over to the driver behind the access panel there. Um, all these are all, in, all run together. Uh, it also runs out under the bar over here. So whatever they're doing back behind the bar, they're doing under the bar here too. So um, they're all tied together to, and they're all tied together in this really cool control panel. Uh, again, I believe this is an Amazon find, so it's inexpensive, but this little guy is a flat panel. It's glass, so you can clean it. You can change the color of your LEDs uh, just by simply swiping your finger around here like this. You can change it to white by just simply hitting that. Uh, so it's a really cool little thing that I found. So all of these LEDs are all tied to that panel right there. All right, so here we are at the theater front. Uh, I actually did this, this was the first part of my project. I did this a couple years ago. Um, so I wanted it to look like an entrance to a movie theater. I wanted a ticket booth. I don't know why, but I think ticket booths are super cool. So I built this ticket booth, but this ticket booth has a little bit of a secret that I'll show you in a minute. This is my HVAC return in here. So kind of just built this soffit, found some letters from one of the craft stores, painted them up gold and put theater across there. All I did was took some base molding, painted it gold made a little channel back here. And again, LED tape light runs right through here, comes on with the light switch. So it up lights it, kind of makes it look like um, a movie marquee kind of entrance. I don't know if you can see in here, there's, um, this is actually stenciled. My wife spent hours down here with gold paint and a stencil and she stenciled this design all through all these panels so you'll see anywhere this panel detail is um, this stencil occurs inside the theater too so i think that's a cool little feature so ticket booth this is super cool because it serves as a hidden door uh, back behind here, which I'm going to show you in a second, um, is kind of the access to behind my movie screen. Um, again, small space. My, my theater is only 15 foot by 11 foot. So it's like, where do I hide everything? So I had this little bit of space. There was a sump pump in here. How do you conceal the sump pump? So I just built these makeshift cabinets to conceal everything. You can take a look at that in a minute. Um, this is a real simple thing. It's literally just three quarter plywood, some flexible plywood here because the door has to taper to be able to shut. Um, and I just built basically a box, um, cut an arch, put some plexiglass in it. I hung a curtain in there with the, with the maroon theme and uh, it looks like a ticket booth, but again, serves as a hidden room entrance. And I'll show you that real quick and show you the hinges that this thing's mounted on because they're special hinges. I wanted to show you these hinges real quick. These are called sauce hinges. So there are specialty hidden hinge that you can get. They are rated by weight. So you kind of got to guess how much this thing weighs. And these things real simple mortise in here and here, and they act as a hidden hinge. You don't even know they're there from the outside. All right, here we go into my pride and joy, the movie theater. Quick tip on this door, real simple, cause I wasn't gonna spend $2,000 on a door. This is just a hollow core standard door. Home Depot or Lowe's, and I built this uh, panel that just surface mounts to it. So it is three quarter plywood, uh, a trick to sound panels, and I'll show you inside is actually using carpet padding. And then this is just inexpensive vinyl that we got from a craft store. Put that on there, painted this trim molding up uh, gold color, and now you have what looks to be a storefront door instead of your typical entrance. So we're gonna go in here to the movie theater and check it out. So 1940s themed, tried to get that look. Small room, it's 15 foot by 11 foot. Again, same thing as the bar. How do I cram as many people as I can in this small space? So um, I got six chairs in here and some people can sit up front if they want. So I just built a simple riser. Um, it just has your step up four inches as you can see. I thought it'd be cool to put some uh, aisle lights in the riser so you don't trip and fall on your face as you're going back there. Um, so we have some riser lights there. Um, and again, all the millwork I did myself, it's just simple, 
you know, again, this is the return that we talked about earlier. So I had this soffit on this side. Uh, there's no air around it. So I just built a false soffit on that side to balance it out. Um, I wanted to dress it up. So these are just simple moldings you can buy at home improvement stores. They're painted gold. I dropped some LED tape light in there just to uplight it a little bit. Um, I go with black because of the anti-reflective, obviously being a movie theater. Um, it started to feel a little bit tight in here, so I just painted this sky mural to make it feel like we were outside. It's nothing special. I did it with just some white primer on a blue background and tapped it and made it look like clouds. So um, nothing special up there, but it kind of gives that feel as a, of a taller ceiling. You can see all the stenciling in here. Again, my wife did all this by hand with uh, some gold paint. Um, a cool tip with these sound panels. Um, sound panels are super expensive. So I made these myself. This is three quarter inch plywood, a piece of half inch carpet padding, some inexpensive fabric from a craft store. You screw it to the studs on the wall and then you just find a little molding here to trim it out. And you put them all over the room. This one here is a red velvet just to dress up this column here. This might be hard to see, but um, you put them all around the room. They kind of look like a decorative element and it soundproofs it in here. Um, so I got an 85 inch screen, six seats. They do recline. Um, nothing too crazy, but again, I can dim this down a little bit and you may be able to see that. Um, yeah, and it's, uh, it's 7.2 surround sound, wired for 9.2. Um, I just kind of gave up on that part of this right now. But um, yeah, so this is the 1940s home theater. All right, that's, that's pretty much it. Small basement, like I said, had a lot of challenges, a lot of requests. So that's kind of how I fit everything in here. And uh, that's it, that's what I got. Thanks.